Hey everyone, welcome back to Hobbies with Jose. I'm Jose Carbajal, and today we've got... I don't know what we've got. Let's find out. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Good to have you back. So before we get started with our mystery project, whatever that might be today, we have a little issue to resolve for our contest. So let's go to the Gleam website and find out who our lucky winner is. And here we are on the Gleam website. You can see we had a total of 253 entries, which is certainly a lot more than the five I thought we were going to get. <laughs> but that's a good, good turnout. So I'm going to just click on the uh, draw winner button. And of course, I'm going to blur out if any complete names or emails come out. So we won't show any of that info, but we'll see what we've got. Good luck to everybody here. Yep, we're going to draw one winner, and here we go. And we have our winner, Brittany, from the Bronx. Congratulations, Brittany. I'm going to be sending you an email shortly. All right. <laughs> very nice, very nice. And there you have it. Congrats once again to Brittany from the Bronx, and thanks to everybody who entered. I really couldn't have done this without you all. But now we get to the most important part, for me anyways, and that's to find out what project I'm going to be working on next. So let's go to the votes. And I'll be honest, I really thought I was going to end up with just one or two votes, but no, I got eight. So thank you all for voting. I appreciate that. So we're going to take these in order from least voted and work our way up to the top. In third place, if anybody's surprised, it is Voltron. He came in with one vote. Um, I think what is surprising is that he even got a vote. <laughs> but thank you, TTH Blocks, for your vote. Much appreciated. And now coming in second place, just one vote shy of tying for first, is the USS Discovery. <laughs> is there any even surprising? <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, that's the one I was kind of hoping to build, but it's going to have to wait for next time. So in first place, we've got the Millennium Falcon. And as we do with any model kit, let's start with an unboxing. So here we have the Bandai Millennium Falcon model kit box. And as with all of their Star Wars kits, they're very well designed, kind of minimal, just has a logo. The name here at the bottom, nice, gorgeous shot of what you're gonna build here. And of course, this one comes from the hit movie, The Last Jedi, very popular film there. And on the bottom, we get some very nice shots of the Falcon shot of the movie there. Different angles and some nice details for the kit itself. Here you have the option of building the canopy either with the clear parts or without. And the two figures it comes with here are Chewie and Rey, which I believe that's one of the key differences from the Force Awakens model kit. That one I believe also had Solo and Finn and BB-8, but I'm not 100% sure. But these are the two that come included with this one. And you have the landing gear options and also the boarding ramp that you can build on it as well. And some other details like the radar dish. And I don't think it comes included with the original trilogy dish, just the new one, which is okay. That's a good design, I like that one. And it's showing some of the inner details from the exhaust vents as well. And of course you have the option of lighting up the kit. You do have a lighting unit that's sold separately. And they show you what the characters can look like once painted up. So that should be fun. I'll Definitely need a couple of magnifying glasses for that. And on the other side, we have some good profile shots of the Falcon, showing you some different details from different sides. It is, of course, 1 1 44th scale. And of course, not much to see in the bottom, but let's go ahead and get her opened up and see what we've got. And I'm not gonna lie, this kit can seem a little bit daunting just with the number of runners that are included. But we'll take a look at them here one at a time. And first up, we've got the instruction manual here. And this isn't your typical manual that just folds open. It's an actual booklet with staples because that's how many pages you need for the kit. Very similar simplistic design as the box itself with a nice shot of the built kit. And one of the improvements this instruction manual has over the Force Awakens version is that it actually has translations for the instructions, which can be a bit handy. 
I won't go through all the pages here, but you can see just how detailed the manual is. I'll definitely have to spend a bit of time studying these here. And on the back of the instruction booklet, you get very nice reference photos for the decals or the stickers, depending how you want to go about it. And also a color guide if you want to mix your own paints. I know I'm going to paint it, just don't know if I'm going to mix them. I'm going to decide that. And next up out of the box is an advertisement for the perfect great Millennium Falcon. If you like this kit, we've got a bigger one for you. <laughs> I would need such a big display case for this thing. Man, it would be awesome to build one like this though. It would just be that much bigger of an undertaking for this bad boy. Here we have the decals and the sticker sheet, which I already know. I'm, if I'm gonna use any of these, it's probably gonna be the decals, but I'm probably gonna end up painting these parts in myself. There are some finer details for some of the smaller markings that I'll be using for the Falcon. All right, here is bag number one. Let's get this guy open. And right away I noticed the clear blue part for the back of the Falcon. That piece looks very nice. And here in the bottom, we've got the clear parts for the canopy and the gun turret sections. And various parts here on the runner. Some very detailed sections here that are gonna go on the whole of the Falcon. Very intricate. So we've got Chewie here. This is either Solo or Finn. Either Solo or Finn. <laughs> and then we've got Ray. So they actually do have these two extra figures, but I can't really tell them apart on which one is which. So I have to figure that out. And this is just a, just like a flat 2D standing figure, I guess just for scale. But that's cool. I'm glad I had more figures than what I anticipated. And next up on the runners. Looks like we've got two of the same here. Let's get these opened up. Yeah, they're very identical, but we've got E1 and E2. And it looks like E1 has various exterior parts of the Falcon. We get a canopy section here. More fine details. And on runner E2, some similar looking parts, but also some different ones as well. Section for the back engine. Inside of the cockpit. Very nice. And I want to try to get in as close as possible, but the detail work on these pieces are just amazing. That is some good detail. And let's see what else we've got here. More white parts. And here we have runners D1 and D2. And on D1 looks like we have some more exteriors of the Falcon. These are some of the front sections of the ship. And pretty much same thing on D2, exterior sections. This is the part that leads into the cockpit it looks like. And these look like the parts for the boarding ramp. Next up. Ooh, big white part. So this looks like the bottom section of the Falcon here. 
Uh, this is the battery compartment that you can uh, purchase separately to insert that in. And there's going to be a plate that you just attach on top of that. But very good detail overall on all of these pieces. the top section here we definitely have the iconic engine exhausts here with again more great details onto this mold very impressive more white parts And these two are identical, they're both runner F. Looks like we've got some more exterior parts. Actual turret guns here, parts for the engines. Uh, little fin details on the back. Landing gears. Very nice. And I think we've got one more. Not sure what this little insert is for. I might Google it. Have Google translate it for me, but there's a shot of that. And looks like we have the base for the Falcon here. This is part SWB16, and it's like a tan color. And it certainly has a texture to it, like a dirt or a rocky road, perhaps. That's nice. I think I've seen some other modelers turn this into um, an ocean, which might be cool to do. So that is the overall look at the Bandai Millennium Falcon Star Wars model kit, 1 144th scale. And even knowing that it's a Bandai kit, knowing that they know their stuff, this kit is very impressive as far as the level of detail that it has. It's a very good quality kit. So. I'm eager to get started. I'm almost a little bit afraid to get started. <laughs> Just the level of detail that it has and how intricate the parts are. Um, it's a bit of a task, but I can't wait to begin. So next week, we'll go ahead and have part one of building this new kit. Hope you can all join me for that. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next week. Take care.